There's a 10 minute delay. All right, so uh, welcome to Talk Live. Uh, you're watching JustFM.ca. Make sure you download that app, uh, Just TV. Go check it out on YouTube. We're Facebook Live. Um, right now, what we uh, what we're doing right now is uh, we have Mandy Fox here and Nick Iron Shirt. Uh, what we're gonna do is uh, you're from the Sweet Grass Sweet Grass Youth Alliance, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you're part of that. Yeah, both of us. Okay, what is that? Well, Amber Jensen is the one who started Sweetgrass Youth Alliance um, about two years ago, <clears throat> and then that's when it became uh, what do you call it? When it became uh, not non -pro like not for profit organization. Right. And so, <clears throat> for her, she 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 wanted to help you and like mainly um, youth who uh, were vulnerable, right? And to keep them off the streets and stuff like that. So she works with um, a, a lot of people who struggle uh, with addictions and um, all that kind of stuff. Right. And uh, myself, I came into contact with, with Amber working at Peak. And What's Peak? Peak Vocational. Uh, people with disabilities, uh, mm. we work with them. And so there is a program there that Deanna Vincent made called Our Space. And that was, um, that was where we worked with a lot of people too, uh, on the streets who, um, who I saw too that used to, or were at the shelter. Um, <clears throat> and since I left too, sadly, uh, I think a few people have passed on that I worked with. Really? Yeah. So that's one of our main, um, like, thing is that we 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 see that a lot. People passing away from addictions wow. and street life. Like people that you've <coughs> helped passing away. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened uh, with Amber too. She's a foster parent, Kay. and so she had a foster child pass. Right. Away. I spoke with Amber, and she lost one of her um, one of her kids after he left her care, right? mm -hmm. like within a year. Yeah. Right, I saw that interview on uh, CBC the other night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Sweetgrass Youth, Sweetgrass Youth Alliance. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that do? What What do they do for the community? So, the OPI Crisis um, Project is like the, one of the first big projects that Sweetgrass Youth Alliance is able to do and to get funded for to uh, from Alberta government. Mm. And um, so I came into contact with her in January. Um, I I was actually signed up to do uh, an applied studies at the university, and so I had to find an organization in Lethbridge um, that I wanted to work with. And and I kind of like you know I've been working in the um, human services for a long time. So I was kind of like gazing, well, what do I want to do, um, what, like, if I could get paid, but mainly volunteer work for 10 hours a week, Yeah. and then write about it and study it, right? So when I heard Amber had um, started this group, and I came across it on Facebook, and she was posting that they, they uh, opened up an uh, oversized kind of like shelter thing during the winter at the Friendship Center. She helped organize that. And um, so I asked her about it, and she's like, oh, well, come get on board. And so I talked to her, and <clears throat> and then we didn't think anything, like, you know, things were going to come out of it. She just said, well, we're just trying to do this, and now we volunteer here, and mm -hmm. we have we, we go to the shelter every Wednesday and every evening, and we do game night. And uh, I was like, okay, fine, yeah, well, I can definitely help you out with different things. She's like, yeah, well, whatever programs. But then this came up. And they said, um, so what are you going to do to uh, to promote awareness of the OPI crisis and stuff? And she came across, um, what's his name? Jason Eagle Speaker Eagle. stuff online too. Right, right. Jason's the um, the graphic artist, eh? he mm -hmm. does all the Nappy comic mm -hmm. books and that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's like, if you want to make a book, you know, contact me. He's always advertising that. So oh, she exactly, did. Yeah. And so then we thought, well, okay, well, how about we turn this project into a book, and that's how we'll make awareness. Right, and that's why you're here today. Um, 
Uh, there's a big book release that's happening on, uh, when is it, the 29th or? It's 30th. the 29th, the 30th. Saturday. Saturday at the Blackfoot, where is that? Blackfoot Lodge. The Blackfoot Lodge. On the north side. On the north side. And uh, what it is, it's a big book release. Is, um, uh, it's a, I saw the cover for it, it's beautiful. Uh, Jason Eagle Speaker actually, um, how do you say, he illustrated these stories. And this book is actually stories from um, like uh, mothers, uh, sisters, grandmothers of people that have that we lost to this opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, Nick and I, um, how we got, like what we did was helped get these stories. We interviewed really? people. Yeah. You, you sit there with a tape recorder and just listen to them talk? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You sit there and take notes on what they're mm -hmm. saying. And then what they, they did you them. film them? No. No, we didn't. No, no we had, if people thing. didn't want to be, if they wanted to be anonymous, then it was. Oh, really? I didn't so anonymous. There's probably like a good half of it <laughs> is anonymous because, um, I don't know, they just don't want to be seen that way, right? Well, yeah, well, the stories are, they're hard, right? Like, you guys oh, have yeah. to sit there through the stories. Like, could, could you tell me any kind of stories that you guys have to sit through? Well, we're sitting through stories, like, especially like when we're talking about, uh, through the issues of losing somebody mm -hmm. and then you could tell through their through their faces through the how they're telling the stories of them so they break down you know, just oh sit man. there and listen to them and yeah you know it you know kind of almost uh, sit there and kind of not counsel but you know just say you know, everything's good and everything's all right and then carry on with the story and it's quite touching to hear these stories and it's kind of uh, you yeah you think like oh okay well i'm just gathering stories but when you're in the um, moment with some of them who are who are even still dealing with situations at the time and uh, you can just feel I don't know you just feel that whole um, sadness that um, like in you just like no oh, man like don't don't give up don't you know don't know well, and the truth is this whole opioid crisis is only maybe about three or four years old you know it, it's still brand new so when you're talking to these people they're talking about like losing somebody within the last couple of years yeah very I, recent i had a um, neighbor that lived next to me where uh, his uh her um mother passed away one year then the next year her father and the next year her sister oh my god and so that she got her family of four three of them were lost to yeah um, to the same drug so it's, it's pretty well wow, they all died one. from yeah, overdosing same, yeah all the same drug you want a year after just like almost like one year apart mm -hmm. so in the, within three four years she's lost her whole family so these are the kind of stories that are documented in this book okay yeah. mm -hmm. uh, what's the book called i am the opioid crisis yeah Southern Alberta. the one Christmas picture Alberta. i sent you yeah, yeah. Um, that, that's the, the pic we got advertising right yeah my sister tamara uh, did that picture up and um what is what is that picture for because I, I don't see it on that yeah well i think it's going to be inside like yeah. in th the next page or whatever yeah. kind of like a inside cover page i really like that picture it's pretty badass mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well like, right yeah they uh uh they wanted some sort of form of like art from um the community and so she did that one up yeah it's in the corner there oh yeah there it is uh mm -hmm. She, um, it's kind of, it's kind of neat when you like look at it closely too. Hey, like, well, it looks like one. a bird. Like that's what well, that's the uh, thing. Then I think like people are, are like making their own kind of conclusions. conclusions out of what she drew. See, some people would say it looks like a, um, like a, a coffin, a show, a something, coffin. Yeah. A, coffin. a tombstone, a bird, you know, stuff like that. And then yeah, you could, you could check this out. Go to our Tuck Live page. It's the advertisement for tonight's show. Um, it's the opioid. I am. The opioid crisis stories from southern Alberta that's what we're talking about right now mm -hmm. and then you can see like the needles in the who, background who did you say did that picture uh, my sister Tamara Fox. Tamara yeah. Fox yeah she does a lot of artwork um, Local artists but up. I think that's like the main thing is we want the community to openly talk about these things and not like be afraid that this is happening like because it's happening to a lot of people and I think that's where um, people struggle. They think, oh, I, I guess I'm stuck. I don't know what to do with my daughter or you know, her son or whoever it is really close to me. I'm dealing with this every day. And 
and then I gotta be at work every day, and how do I handle this? I feel like, you know, giving up, like, all that kind of stuff. And then, and then they find out too, people at work are dealing with the same thing. So it's like, it's, and that's, that's where you, fe that's where you realize <coughs> how much of a crisis this is. Yeah. And people don't see it because people are not talking about it. And then once you get to hear people's stories, it's like, Thing. Well, it, it's really easy to ignore, mm -hmm. you know, like if you're not involved, it, if you don't do the drugs yourself, it's very easy to mm -hmm. ignore that fact. But the thing about it is where we come from, from the Blood Tribe, we're a very small community. So when someone dies in our community, we all know and we all feel it too. And, you know, usually we're related to them as well. Um, I think for us as Nititipi, it's a little bit harder for us to ignore than, um, you know, the outside non-native population. Yeah, but it's affecting everybody like all over North America. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Yeah, it's not just mm -hmm. here. Just in uh, Canada alone, there is uh, eight thousand deaths just in the year. Eight thousand in the mm -hmm. in all of Canada of this. From oh God, uh, and you see pictures. You see pictures of like uh, moms like are dead on the like on the side of the road with their babies sitting beside them. Yeah. Eh? There's it's even there's even one story where uh, uh, a kid came home from school to find both his parents being uh, put in an ambulance. From overdose, both, there, both. The yeah. Parents, so you, and mother. you know, um, I'm going into education in this in fall, and what one of the things that I've heard is that teachers on the reserve, um, mainly because it's so big, like you know our smaller community feels it, it hits them harder. Um, <coughs> that teachers are seeing these children, right? Or with these children every day who have lost their parents right and so yeah. that's it's like everyone's becoming like counseling someone right because of this right it's not it, you know but it's like how do we come together as a community and heal that you know help people help the younger generation get through all of this right um, because, like, you know, okay, is this the thing right now? What is it going to be in the future? Right. You know? I, I just hope, like, 20 years from now, we could uh, look back on this and say, well, that was just, like, uh, if you look at, like, uh, I want to go back in the history right now with the whiskey trade back in the 1870s, and there was five years when alcohol was first introduced to our people, where people were dying left and right. Mm -hmm. And um, this is, it sounds really similar to that five years back in the 1870s, you know, this brand new stuff. and. Uh, we're not ready for it, right? Uh, our people are not ready for it. No. No, 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 no. Especially with the small amounts you need, it's easy, very easy to get an um, overdose. That's why most people need to be trained in them. And it's not very expensive either, right? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, you could get it anywhere. You, yeah. you just got to walk outside this studio right here and you could have someone to hook you up. Well, look, it's, it's, you see a lot of people get hooked so fast, so mm -hmm. easy that, yeah, then it's right there in front of yeah. us. And and that's where you know I've even heard on these documentaries where they say it's the 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 new generation well the gener like the younger generation that's their new drug yeah and then that to me sounds really scary because it's like well I think of my kids right mm -hmm. they're teenagers and I'm like I don't ever want them getting hooked up and yeah. you know messed up in that stuff um, I think of my nieces my nephews you know. Kids and that, and mm -hmm. the little ones that are coming yeah, out. yeah, I got a little teenager at home too. So we all have to be, you know, kind of aware of everything. Yeah, That's and then like the and too. the parents we talk to, right? Or yes. like I never thought that my I would be dealing. I didn't become a parent and having a baby. I didn't think that I'd be dealing with this today. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to help my my um, child get off of. Um, oh my God, that's harsh. All right, so you're listening to uh, Talk Live on JustFM.ca. Make sure you go and download that app, Just TV. You can check us out on YouTube. Um, so we got Mandy Fox here and Nick Ironshire. And what we're talking about is a book launch. It's a book launch celebration by the Sweetgrass Youth Alliance. Um, this is happening on June 30th, 2018, from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock down at the Blackfoot Lodge Gallery, uh, 837th Street, North Lethbridge. Um, you got special guest Eugene Braverock, uh, McCause. He's on Wonder Woman. He played the chief. He's going to be there. He's going to be talking. He um, contributed a story. That's he put in a story mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. That's why he's a part of it. 
I'm excited. I'm excited to see. He him. wanted to be a part of it just because he's just his like he's a part of the community, right? He's like, I want to support yeah. this back home. So he put a story in, and then he said he would come. Up wow, that's awesome. That's really cool. I'm really excited to see him. Um, yeah, he was on Wonder Woman. Uh, he played the chief as well. You got L. Rev from uh, the uh, Psychonauts. He's going to be performing. They have a show here on Jess FM as well. Uh, JPB, Jarrett Pantherbone is going to be uh, spinning a track too. Uh, there's going to be a silent auction, door prizes. Um, if you want any, any more information, contact Amber at 403-795-7850. Check it out. The advertisements are all over the place. Um, thank you guys very much for coming mm -hmm. out today. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I'm still sweating. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are playing for three hours yeah. downtown. We they were downtown for three hours. And yeah. It was just hot. And we're rocking and rolling. <laughs> <laughs> so many bands are you in? You got Mom Bod, you got Fox Eyes, you got um, Warriorettes, and then you got Nick and. Yeah, and then I mean, three out of the four. <laughs> yeah, and then we joined <laughs> all the bands too. Yeah. And then we joined a singing drum group. Okay. Cap rope singers. Oh, nice. So nice. that's really that's really fun. I really enjoy that, and the majority of it are women. Yeah. <laughs> 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 He's our highest lead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at the highest <laughs> words. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so stay tuned. Um, up next, we got Devin Hargay is going to talk about Pride. I'm not sure if he's here. And after that, we got SMG Savage Music Group coming on. To Talk some trash, I guess. <laughs> All right, peace. Thank you. Thank you. You're bum, Mark. I'll fix this chair. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, check, check. This is Jess F. Now, top five. We're going to play a little bit of, uh, a little bit of music. He's the only good track by the Snotty Nose by his kids. This track is called The Warriors. So yeah, so what's in the news here? Um, we're talking about is, um, I don't know if you guys have taken a look at this, but Josephine Peltier, uh, she's 33 from the Mus Muscoequin First Nation in Saskatchewan. Um, she was shot and killed by Calgary police on May 17th. Uh, she was buried on June 9th. So uh, what happened was basically uh, her and a friend entered an unoccupied uh, basement suite. The neighbors called the police reporting a home invasion and a K-9 unit and tactical team responded. This is up in Calgary. Um, and what happened um, was the police shot her seven times. Her friend was injured by rubber bullets and he was taken into custody. He was suffering from stab wounds that the police claim was inflicted by Josephine uh, before being shot. Uh, but the family claims that this is a lie, fabricated by the CPS, that's the Calgary Police Service. Um, so the incident is being investigated right now by ACERT, A-S-I-R-T, that's Alberta Sears Incident Response Team. And usually what they do is they, um, they respond to any kind of police shootings or any police violence. And uh, there, there has been quite a bit. You know, you talk about the Colton Bushy case. Um, there's a few incidents that have been happening with the police. And now this is uh, Josephine Peltier. She was shot seven times by the Calgary Police. And she got buried... Uh, um, out in Saskatchewan. So what else we got here? So I'm looking at ABS CBN News uh, on May 18th, Monday, May 18th. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but the earthquake of joy happened in Mexico City. <laughs> this is when Mexico actually scored against Germany in World Cup soccer. They won. They beat Germany 1-0. The World Cup's going on right now, so go ahead and check that out. But there's an earthquake of joy. That's what they call it. Mexico beat Germany. Germany's are the, they're the world champs right now. They won the World Cup, uh, like uh, the last World Cup that had happened. And when Mexico scored, so many people were jumping in Mexico City. 
that they caused an artificial earthquake. You can go check this out. A seismologist recorded a, a peak in uh, seismic activity in Mexico City. So <laughs> what happened was they just started jumping up and down as soon as they scored. Uh, they ended up winning the game. So <laughs> the, the earthquake of joy. I love it. What else is going on here? Oh my goodness. Okay, um, have you guys been paying attention to the news lately? Um, recently, uh, there's been this thing happening in the southern states, uh, Texas actually, children being separated from their parents, uh, illegal immigrants crossing the border. Uh, the Trump administration has had this policy going on where they, um, they've been taking the kids away and basically locking them up in cages. Uh, today, actually, I was watching this live feed and Trump actually uh, ended the practice and they're all patting each other on the back, even though they actually, uh, they're the ones that put this policy in place. So hundreds of children actually wait in, were waiting in large metal cages with foil blankets at the Texas Border Patrol facility. This is McCall in Texas, where I was reading about, and more than 1,100 were being held. Uh, they're being held in an old warehouse. This is in South Texas, and one cage reportedly had 20 children inside. So families are separated at the border where parents are sent to prison facing federal charges awaiting prosecution and the kids are taken into government care. And so if you're charged with a crime, you can't have your kids, which you know, we all know about that. So in the span of six weeks, from April to May 2018, nearly 2,000 children were taken and under U.S. law, children are required to be turned over within three days to shelters funded by the Department of Health and Human Services. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm reading on C uh, CBC.ca here. Um, here's the headline. It says, Republicans are on the defensive, but Trump digs in on separating parents and children at the border. This is from uh, June 18th. So this is from Monday, actually. There's actually a Walmart in Brownsville, Texas, which has been converted into a shelter housing boys under the age of 18. Uh, they're all at the ages of 12 to 18 there. Um, another facility, a teenage girl was taking care of a toddler who she, she assumed was two years old, but she turned out to be four. She had, she had to teach the other girls how to change her diaper. So this poor little baby is getting her diaper changed by uh, a lot of strangers, basically. And uh, there's one girl, the teenage girl that um, was taking care of her, who doesn't even know her or is related to her, had to teach the other girls how to change a diaper. And they thought this girl was two. She's actually four. But she was eventually, she was eventually uh, reunited with her auntie and it was revealed the reason she wasn't communicating properly was because she didn't actually speak Spanish. She spoke an indigenous dialect called, uh, I'm gonna say this wrong, Quiche, Quiche, but it's, it's from Guatemala. Um, even Laura Bush, the wife of George W. Bush compared the border facilities to the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II. Uh, this was also a practice here in Canada. Um, Lethbridge, uh, if you don't know, was actually a site for a Japanese internment during World War II. It was out in the industrial area. Um, there's, there's also other sites. Um, but yeah, that's what she's comparing it to. But anyways, yeah, that's what's happening down in the States. I'm so glad that they're ending that practice of taking children away from their parents. Uh, it's about time they're that. Right now, I'm going to invite a brand new guest here, uh, Devin Hargraves. is to come sit with us for a second. Am I saying that right? Hargraves? Hargraves, yeah. Hargraves. <laughs> All right. Good to see you, brother. Cool. Thanks All for right. having me. So uh, what we're talking about right now is a uh, uh, Pride Fest, right? Yeah. yeah. Pride Fest is happening. Full gear. We're about halfway through the week. Um, is, it, is it is it all a week long event? Uh, actually, we've been running. We have over fifty events in the month of June. Wow, it's like a whole month. Right? <laughs> it really is. Um, yeah. Coming up, we've got uh, Martini Night and the Pride Awards tomorrow. Okay. Uh, what are what are the Pride Awards? Uh, there's there's different categories. So you're looking at uh, community development, um, business, okay, um, legacy award. Things like that, youth award, uh, essentially recognizing people in uh, the queer community who have stepped up, made a difference, and unlocked their mind. Oh wow! Okay, can you give us an example? Of like a what? Uh, uh, a previous winner, for example, Reed Hollander. Um, yeah. 
Great hall. He's, he's been so involved in the community. He's been on the board for eight years. Um, and, and just left his mark on Lethbridge as far as getting the first beer gardens for Pride Fest. Oh, yeah. uh, things like that. Um, so he was a Legacy Award winner. Um, okay. Three people nominated this year. Um, one of the other winners for the, the Legacy Award has been uh, a forerunner as far as advocating for, for queer rights and all these families. Legacy Award, hey? It is. Okay, that's interesting. Um, what's happening? I was looking at this thing called uh, Pride Dance. What's going on? Yeah, we have um, Stacey Lynn Matthews yeah. uh, coming in. She's uh, been on RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I like that show. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we do have um, Jax Garcia. Um, they're a, a genderqueer um, performance artist hosting the night. Um, oh, yeah? So that that's Pride Dance. What, what's going on? Where's that at? That's at the Multicultural Center. It's okay, twenty five dollars. Okay. You can find them on uh, on their link off our, our Facebook or right, right. Pride dot ticket. Dot yeah, check out Lethbridge Pride. Um, it's on Facebook. It's everywhere. Well, we hope it's everywhere. <laughs> We've shared it about everywhere we can. But. Okay, so um, now I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you about some tough stuff here. Yeah. Um, you know the 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 whole um, Southern Alberta Pride movement. Um, Honestly, I feel that it's it's quite new, it's fresh, hey. And um, last year was the first year that they put um, the the rainbow crosswalk. No, this here. is our our third year. Is um, it the third year? It is uh, not in that format that you see now. Though. Yeah. Um. So the first year we did it, it was small lines throughout the crosswalk. Oh, really? Um, like chunks of it yeah. separated. It wasn't as noticeable. We did have a, a four or five of those. Okay. Um, but as far as running the actual straight flag through, this has yeah. been our second. I like that, but last year I remember I was uh, reading in a newspaper, someone actually uh, defaced the crosswalk. Yeah, it looked like I think what it came down to was two buckets of black paint. Uh, the news mm -hmm. initially reported it as tar, but uh, yeah. it was it was paint that was dumped there. And then as people drove through it, it just kept spreading and spreading and spreading. Oh yeah, so someone actually went up there and just threw paint right on the. We don't know exactly how it happened. Um, they found the the buckets of, of paint, um, which is how they. It looked like somebody dumped out a can, two cans of paint on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, eh? Uh, <laughs> the lengths people go to. Eh? I mean, uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna paint in public places, make it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. Is that a political statement or what? Anonymous. No idea. Um, another thing is, um, Cardston. Actually, I'm I'm a I live in Carson. Oh. And uh, Cardston just recently had their very first Pride Fest themselves, eh? Yeah, we had a, a play crazy. Yeah, you were out there. Yeah, yeah, that was sponsored by Pride. That's one of the events, kind of where we, we like to be a part of it to get it started. And well, where, where did you raise the flag? Was it like at uh, City Hall? No, um, we couldn't do that. They wouldn't give us a flagpole. We literally put uh, a flag. Really, they didn't a, give you a flagpole? No, um, they didn't have a flag policy. <laughs> Cardston is a really <laughs> conservative <laughs> town. You know that, eh? It is. It's very conservative. I was actually pretty surprised that. Uh, there's a Pride Fest happening mm. there. What's that park that's behind the park? Lions Park. Lions Park is yeah. where we did it. Okay. I was so confused getting in there because <laughs> you've got a park and then in small letters underneath it says Lions Park. <laughs> here kind of thing. <laughs> but yeah, okay. that's a big step for Southern Alberta. No, it is. It's huge. That's what I'm saying. I, you know, pretty is a little redneck town. <laughs> to be doing stuff like that is actually a real step forward for the young people and everybody out there. Tolerance is what we talk about. Even with the temple, right? It's right in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's very very religious town. Um, also, Tabor. I want to talk about that. Last year, Tabor, uh, someone actually took down the flag. Uh, there, there was a flag that was raised there, the rainbow flag. They took it down and they burnt it. Um, there was there was two incidents. So yeah. the flag was raised. Somebody ripped it off the pole <laughs> um, and, and stole it, and then somebody burned the flag while it was on the pole. Oh so I think they goodness. must have ran some sort of accelerant up it yeah. and, and let that up. That takes a bit of work. <laughs> Lethbridge probably gave them all their flags for that. <laughs> so <laughs> they're like, oh man, here they are calling me for another flag. <laughs> so I think uh, I think in total the end count was three. <laughs> oh wow, they went through three flags. Yeah. yeah, but this year actually they had a brand new Pride Fest, right? Uh, second annual in Tabor. Yep. And I heard it was one of the biggest ones because you had Calgary Pride coming out, Lethbridge Pride. Everyone, um, like I wanted to say that um, the people that defaced the flag, instead of 
ruining the event actually made it stronger. What what happens when things like that happen? Exactly what you said. You're not tearing the the queer community apart. You're getting more of the general community to to realize that what we're doing is important. Yeah. Um, and like when our crosswalks got defaced, the entire downtown business core was right behind us, yeah. fundraised. Because um, of that, we're able to put in permanent crosswalks. Burn the flag and tape, or they're flying it from the provincial building. They have uh, <laughs> security on that from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. every night. Um, that, that's great. That, that's a step. That's a step forward, right? Yeah, definitely. Actually, something that <laughs> we haven't really made public. I accidentally gave them the wrong flag. What? Um, so instead of the usual flag-sized flag, I gave them one of our tablecloth flags. <laughs> so they're flying this huge. <laughs> leg so out in favor. It's bigger than it usually is. Huh? Oh, it's much bigger, <laughs> but <laughs> it went up and we looked at that yeah. and we're like, you know what, let's go above and beyond. Why the biggest leg this town's ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You know, uh, in uh, the native community, uh, 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 we call them two-spirited, right? Yeah. Two-spirited, and that's what we say. And uh, it actually, um, it, it's it's been, uh, how could you say like the discrimination that comes with it is brand new to our people. Um, back in our people's ways, um, we believe that the two-spirited people had more power, they had strength, right? Had more strength in their, they were revered in our communities. And we lost that with Western civilization and colonization, you know, and now um, it's turned into, a, well, you, you know, you face the discrimination, I'm sure. And uh, But what a shame, right, to take something so, so pure and beautiful and corrupt that. Um, yeah, we, two years ago, and we always tried to kind of focus on different aspects of pride. Uh, yeah. It's not just about gay, it's not just about lesbian or bi. Um, so two years ago we focused on transgender issues, we got the trans flag crosswalk put right. in. Um, this year we tried to bring more of a focus as well to the, um, the two spirit and, and things like that, uh, including, I'm not sure if you've seen that, the videos are attended our, our flag raising, um, but we had a, a blessing by an elder. They oh, really? they, they burned um, the sage, I believe. Yeah. Um, and uh, and things like that, as well as a much more increased awareness of the fact of yeah. whose land our events are held on. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that that's really important to acknowledge where where you're at. Right? Yeah. So a lot more addressing that. Actually, tonight at seven, we had Teddy Surratt, mm -hmm. um, who's from Ontario. There, he did a talk on being two spirit. Oh yeah. Um, our um, our secretary Marshall Vial. Uh, oh yeah, no Marshall. Ago. Oh, Marshall's Vial. Mahoney, yeah. Okay. He did a Indigo queer panel uh, where he facilitated a talk on. What's that? What's what's the Indigo queer panel? Indigenous as well as queer. Just a play on I know, but what is it though? Uh, he did a, a talk on what it means to be two spirit and, and things like that. Okay. So we're just yeah. trying to do what we can to, to raise awareness and, uh, right. and and things like that. Well, honestly, it's it's, it's about tolerance, right? And uh, you know, lifestyles are lifestyles. You're allowed to live whichever way you want to live. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's our right as human beings to be who we are, and uh, we all deserve respect. Um, and I believe the rainbow flag includes everyone, including allies. Yeah. So there's there's no shame with flying that. And All right. Well, I'm an ally. Um, thank yeah. you for coming on my show. Thanks I for appreciate having it, me. Devin. Uh, you have a show too, right? Can I do. Uh, YQL Express, Express. Um, every second Thursday. At oh, that's what that stands for. That YQL. YQL. Yeah. YQL. That's the the Lethbridge. And I then know. Express. We kind of tried to do a play on the train. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I've seen your show a couple times. Yeah, well, use that in for one. Yeah, yeah, I watched you. All right, thanks a lot, Devin. Thank you so much, I sir. Appreciate that. So that's Devin Hargraves, uh, Pride Fest. Make sure you check that out, Pride Dance. It's going to be happening next week. Uh, we got a great picture of you right here. Did you see oh. that? The one where you're talking at uh, City Hall. City Hall, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty scary, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Devin. Peace. All right, so you're listening to Tuck Live on JessFM.ca. Uh, we got one more guest panel happening right here, right now. I know y'all been sitting around waiting for these guys. This is SMG, uh, SMG Savage Music Group. So I'm gonna call them into the uh, into the booth right now. Yo, SMG, still out there? All right, come on, have a seat. Ooh. All right, 
right, so right here we got uh, uh, okay. well, why don't you introduce yourselves? Kind of the biggest boys you have in Come here. Come a little closer. Okay. Yeah. All right. Come oh, on, right here. We got to be a little oh. bit intimate here, all right? Are we good now? Kind of. We're all right. So uh, this is uh, this is SMG. This is Dexter Scout, a.k.a. Doggy Star. And over here we got Cam Weaselhead, a.k.a. Killer Cam. Now the boys have been making music for a little while now. Um, but you guys just recently came out with um, was a mixtape called uh, Kill Kit. Volume one, hey? Right? Yeah, because that was my album. That's your album? Yeah. Is it a SMG album or what is um, it? It's a Savage Music album. Like okay. Doggy Star album, basically. So. All right, well, why don't you tell us about that? When, when did that get started? Well, it's actually uh, <coughs> it's been in the works for, it was over a year before it was released. So, um, had a few solid features. Uh, You've been working on for a year? Yeah. Wow. It was, it was, it was a while because um, yeah. just basically having the time and the equipment to do it. Yeah, being able to um, get in there and actually record uh, the material itself wasn't an issue. It was just being able to actually record it. Right. Okay. So, um, well, mixtapes are mixtapes, right? Um, they're kind of like um, I'll just say, um, well, they're not studio, but uh, they're, they're well, they're studio, right? They're studio, but a lot of times the um, the beats are not original. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's basically a mixtape, right? And, um, but but everyone has mixtapes out right now. Um, all the best groups right now are coming out, and that's the best way to get your music out there right now. And I'm hoping SMG will turn this into a studio album eventually. Uh, we're working real you know? hard. Yes. We got a lot of stuff planned, a lot of professional producers, a lot of people that are willing to come support us and showing us a lot of respect, wanting to work with us, collaborate. Uh, what kind of features did you have on your album? I, um, I had a feature from Young Hood, he's an artist on the show. Oh yeah, he's, he's with your group yeah. too, right? And he's actually supposed to be here tonight, but he had some issues. So. Um, I had another feature from Transit, 22. 22 is Transit, where's he from? He's from, uh, I believe he's from D.C., but he, he resides in Calgary, so oh, yeah. he's been there for a while. Yeah. He won the Calgary Music, he got a good award out there a couple of years back, and there's his style and Doggy Star, if you hear them, they're just, they, their song is just so great. Yeah. It's such a great feature. And I said, listen to Transit, because obviously I found out from Homie here, so I started listening to his music and I just started loving it. Their style, they almost, almost exactly sound the same. It's so great, they collaborate so great together. The song Fame, it's just... It's called Fame? Great. That's fame, song? Yeah, yeah, Fame, it's on the SoundCloud, it's doing real good. And that's thing. Dexter has oh yeah, yeah. Tell us where we could hear your music. Where can yeah, we find well, it? we're on SoundCloud, of course. Doggy Stars up on there, and under I'm Savage on Music Group. No, Doggy Stars, Doggy Star. I'm Killer Cam. Yeah. So. Yeah, so check that out on SoundCloud.com/slash. Doggy Star. Doggy Star. And right? of course, search Savage Music on Facebook. We got a good page going, and you know, search it up. You go through it, see what we've been doing, and. Well, that brings me to my next question. Um, when did Savage Music get started? Like, how long ago is this? You, I know you guys have been around for at least a year. Yeah. It was you guys cool. have been spitting around for a long time, right? Yeah, but when did yeah. Savage Music come to fruition? Well, me and Dexter, we kind of ran into familiar circles, but we never really got a chance to come close. So one day, Dexter said, "Hey, man, you know, I see that you're trying to get into the game." Because I've reached out to a ton of artists and said, "Hey, you know." Can you teach me the ways? Can you let me in the door? Can you, anything you can give, I'm willing to take. And so Doggy Star met me and said, hey, I got this idea of starting this music. So, so you, you kind of saw something in him, eh? Yeah. yeah. Originally, we wanted it to be a group, but more now it's becoming a label. We got artists that we're working with right now, and we're trying to do it real proper. So a lot of people are, you know, sleeping on us. Right? Doggy Star hasn't been out promoting it as much as a lot of people, but he dropped his album, boom, dropped it. Yeah. And honestly, it, it, I, it's doing the best out there. Tell, tell me right now, is it gangster rap? Oh, it's straight, it's straight hard. We're straight ruthless, we're straight savage. We live a lifestyle, promote a lifestyle. And yeah, you guys are not bullshitting on the album. No, right? yeah. no, and that's the thing. If gangsters. you hear our lyrics, and if someone wants to say, when you say this in your verse, What's it about? There's gonna be a handful of people that are like, "Oh yeah, I could vouch that really happened. I yeah. could vouch that really did that." And 
Well, that's that's cool, man. That, that's yeah. the only way to make music. Like, you can't you can't uh, you can't BS a BS it, right? Yeah, In yeah, of end, course, you know? right? Yeah. And that's one thing is, uh, for me, if I hear a rapper and I hear some lyrics and I'm just like, whoa, you're talking about having this and that when I'm pretty sure you don't do well, this. Well, that, that's that true. Like, that. like if you're gonna if you're gonna spit some, uh, you're gonna spit some heat. You yeah. be able to back it up, right? Yeah, for sure. Right. And if you're uh, telling people that you're out there doing all this and that, yeah. you better be able to back it up. And then that's the thing, it's like, if you're just saying stuff just because it sounds cool and it sounds raw, but it's like, if you don't really do that or live that life... Then don't spit it. Right? And then that's the thing, that just turns me right off from a lot of people, right? So yeah. Th then that's what I mean. We're, we're really, I believe, the most underrated and most hated people out here. Well, I, I believe that your music is the only real gangster rap that's happening right yeah, now. Yeah, and that's in this, uh, area. a lot of people are not trying to hear that in there. Well, people get scared of it. Right, blackballing yeah. and, you Yeah, know, they, they get scared when you show up to the shows because, right, you know, they're volatile. Ha happen, right, and that's the thing. Like, there's been some stuff and all that, and, you know, I, I personally believe people are just, yeah, like you said, scared and, you know, scared if stuff happens, and I understand from a professional point of view, we have to remain professional, and for the most part, we have, we shook hands with people that do shade our way, we've extended offers to people. Well, the thing about it is, when you're part of a, the musical community, you, you run into the same people every single every time, single all the time, time, at all the shows, you're going to keep seeing the same people all the time, yeah, and, and, and sure. musicians and artists around here know that. It's a very small artistic community that mm -hmm. we have going on here in Southern yeah. Alberta. And when you get like blackballed, like you said, yeah. or blacklisted, it hurts. It, it's it's really crappy. And um, you know, you lose gigs. Yeah, but that's bit. that's we're we're totally cool with that because we got so much coming, we got like I'm I don't I know a lot of people probably say, Oh, well, this guy is just a SoundCloud rapper, he's not really doing it, he doesn't have anything really out there. But like I said, I've been taking music seriously for the past year. Yeah. And I've been learning. Last year, you're the one who taught me how to write. Well, Killer Cam's so. actually on the Blood Rest Crew album. He did a feature on Hustle Grind, uh, one, of the, one of the more hardcore tracks yeah. on the album there. Yeah. Yeah, so um, with that being said. Well, um, Doggy Star, tell me about tell me about uh, Kill Kit. Well, Kill Kit is a... Uh, it's a project I've been working on for a while now. It um, originated from a song I had wrote. Uh, I went through a breakup. And you know, it does a great name. Yeah. Kill Kit. So Kill I love Kit. that. I love that yeah. name. It originated Kill from Kit. a song like from from way back, I'd say 2012, really? which was never released. It was it was it was too hardcore, you know. <laughs> so you've just been uh, sleeping just, on this. Yeah. For a while? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then, you know, I, I thought, you know, well, that has to be my first actual studio album to come out with, right? Yeah. So earlier in the year, I, I had all my material done for it. A few singles were released. I decided to finish it up. I think it was about April. I think I dropped it. Maybe. Yeah, it was a couple of months ago, right? Yeah. It's been a couple months. It's been and if you want to go look at all the other songs about it, Doggy Shadows album, Kill Kit, it, it, what, 20, 3,000 plays right now? Is it there's more there. than no, that. It's way up there. Yeah, right. there's, oh, there's I mean. songs on there, 500 plays. And like I said, he hasn't been out there for more than he dropped it like that. Well, uh, Dogstar, how long have you been rapping? I've been rapping for, for a long time. I mean, I used to rap when I was maybe about 14. Um, we started a rap group out of the reserve called the 505. Boys. I remember the 505 boys. Yeah, thing. and... You guys spit some yeah. shit about us on one of your songs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it quickly escalated into a gang. Like, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, the so 505 boys. Yeah, yeah, so then that's yeah. that kind of blew up and uh, got a very negative, you know, environment we're raised in, too, like coming to come up. And uh, so, I mean, it's out there. You don't have a lot to join, right? So yeah. So a lot of people join them feeling... Well, you know, when you don't got a positive atmosphere where you live, like, what are you going to do? Sing happy music? Yeah, like it, yeah, it's all negative where where we come from. Like our our boys and our family, you know, when I say family, I'm talking about people that live the same life we do and associate in the same circles. And there is a gang life and a big influence on the reserve. And we've been around it our whole lives. And you know, we can't just stop doing what we've been doing our whole lives. And you guys right? are you guys are gangsters. So we're boys affiliated, are crips, yes, right? right? We're we yeah. got boys. We hold it down and. Degree, man. You guys connect with DSAB and yeah, all that DSAB, shit. Yeah, DSAB's huge. 
people don't know what it's about, that's what I mean. If you have to front what you're about, you're not doing it right. So that's what I'm, I'm really, DSAB is where I'm at. It's actually, I'm, j I'm working on an album called DSAB, which is Down South Alberta Bangers, which is going to have all the best da Alberta, Down South Alberta artists. Are I thought it was Down South Alberta Bloods. Oh, no, and that's <laughs> the thing, right? We started it, and they said, well, let's DSAC. And I'm like, no, let's change it to be to try and be more professional, to try and open that door and try to walk away from college because in music and professionally wise you got to be colorblind to that well that, that's stuff, true right? yeah and when it comes to music right like like you look at snoop dog right? Yeah, right and he's making music with um shit night right? yeah for sure so yeah, that, yeah. those are bloods and crips way right back there. in the day right right when um snoop dog walked into that studio yeah right? yeah so, shook them like him yeah oh. But still, mutual respect was gained, you know. Well, it's music, right? If you make good music, that's all yeah. that really matters. Yeah, I've gotten into a lot of trouble over that. Okay, so what we're going to talk about next, um, I want to actually bring something up with you guys. Uh, uh, we're talking beef, right? Give me a second here. We're talking beef today, and uh, I want to talk about, like, um, tell me what you know about, uh, what, what are your favorite beefs in music? Well, I wouldn't say, you know... Well, not favorite. Yeah, favorite, but like, I mean, like, the ones I know, like, most, you know, obviously, 